Hello everybody, watch this video to find out how to speed up VMware, Oracle, VirtualBox and Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machines. The virtualization technology is widely used in various fields from servers to desktop computers. Although it may be quite easy to set up a virtual machine on your computer, its performance always remains to be one of those tricky issues. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a few methods to help you boost your virtual machine. This tutorial is quite generalized, so it's going to be helpful no matter what particular hypervisor you are using. Before you change any settings, restart the computer. Because if your virtual machine has worked normally until now and then it suddenly started to freeze, just try restarting the computer or the server where this machine is installed. This way you'll be able to get a clue why it started to work like that. One of the most important things to affect the machine's performance is the system memory. Virtual machines are sensitive to the amount of system memory they can access. That's why you should allocate enough memory for the virtual machine according to the minimal requirements of a specific operating system. Generally speaking, it's recommended to give at least a third of total system memory of the host computer to the virtual machine you want to run. If you create a virtual machine and it appears to have not enough system memory for normal operation, you can change its settings to add more. Before doing it, make sure that the virtual machine is turned off. It's also not recommended to assign more than 50% of the actual available virtual memory to the virtual machine. For normal operation of any virtual machine, it will suffice to have 80 GB of system memory in your main computer. Try setting a higher value and see what happens to your virtual machine now. Also, you can add more CPU cores to increase the effect. A working virtual machine puts more pressure on the central processing unit, that is CPU. Therefore, the more CPU resource a virtual machine can use, the better and faster it will work. If a virtual machine is installed on a computer with a multi-core CPU, you can allocate several cores for the virtual machine by changing its settings. A virtual machine using two or more CPU cores will work significantly faster than a machine using only one core. It's not recommended to install a virtual machine on a computer with a single-core or dual-core CPU. Such machines will be too slow and ineffective in performing any tasks. One more setting that can affect virtual machine performance is its video options. For example, enabling 2D or 3D acceleration in VirtualBox can make some applications work much faster. If your virtual machine uses certain apps to work with graphics, allocating more video memory can speed up work routines. Unsurprisingly, this setting depends on the configuration of the graphics adapter used by the host PC. When creating a virtual machine, you can choose to have one of the two possible virtual disk types. By default, the virtual machine will use a dynamically allocated hard disk, the size of which increases over time as you add more files or apps. That is, if you create a new machine with a dynamically allocated hard disk having a maximal size of 30 GB, it's not going to take away all that space from your main hard disk immediately. After installation of an operating system and programs, it can still be about 10 GB. As you add more files to the virtual disk, its size can grow until it reaches the 30 GB size. This is pretty convenient, as every virtual machine won't take too much space on the host computer's hard disk. However, a dynamically allocated virtual disk is slower than a fixed size one. When you choose to have a fixed size virtual hard disk, all of its space will be assigned regardless of how much data will be written to such a disk. That is, a fixed size hard disk of a virtual machine takes up more space on your physical drive, but it copies or saves file and data faster. If you have initially created a virtual machine with a dynamically allocated hard disk, you can change the disk type to fixed size later, if necessary. Follow the link below to visit our channel and watch a special video about it. After a guest operating system is installed on your virtual machine, the first thing you do is to install a package of tools or drivers for such virtual machine, for example, VirtualBox Guest Additions or VMware Tools. Such packages contain drivers to help the guest operating system work faster. They are easy to install. In VirtualBox, boot the guest operating system and select Devices, Insert Guest Additions CD Image. After that, start the installer, which will appear as a separate disk in the folder this PC of the guest operating system. In VMware Workstation, select the menu VM Install VMware Tools. 
After that, start the installer, which will appear as a separate disk in the folder of the SPC of the guest operating system. One more way to boost the virtual machine is to add the folder containing the machine to the exclusions of your antivirus. Along with other files, the antivirus also scans the virtual machine files, which affects its performance. However, the antivirus has no access to the files within the guest operating system of your computer, which makes such scanning useless. You can see the task manager to find out if the antivirus scans virtual machine files. If you look here and see many virtual machine processes, try turning the antivirus off or adding the machine's folder to the exclusions of your antivirus. Then the antivirus will ignore all files in such folder. Also, freezes can be caused by installing a new antivirus, so it's better to check if an antivirus got installed as an extra bonus with some other software. If that's the case, just remove it from the control panel. We also recommend checking hardware acceleration settings. Intel VTX and AMD V are special virtualization technologies meant to improve performance of virtual machines. However, it may not be enabled automatically in some computers. To enable such a function, you should go to BIOS and turn the function on manually. So, if there is a performance issue with your virtual machine, make sure that these virtualization features are enabled in BIOS. and then turn them on in the virtual machine. If your computer uses a hard disk to store virtual machines, try moving the machine to an SSD. This is going to produce a huge boost. Adding an SSD is actually the first and the best upgrade for a computer these days. It will speed up the computer greatly, as well as the virtual machine you have installed. Also, we don't recommend keeping virtual machine disks on removable media. They work even slower than any internal HDD. An operating system installed on a virtual machine is almost the same as the one you have on your main computer. You can improve your virtual machine performance following the same principles and using the same methods that are good for any other operating system. For example, system performance improves when you close background programs or those starting automatically with a system. System performance can also be affected by the need for defragmentation, if it is installed on an HDD, and so on. One more solution to boost a virtual machine's performance could be changing the actual program which is used to handle it. Some users claim that a specific hypervisor works faster in their case. So yes, you can transfer your virtual machine to another hypervisor and you're welcome to watch a special video to see how. If the virtual machine lags or freezes when you start it, it usually happens after the operating system gets updated. The primary cause might be the activated core isolation feature. So, if your virtual machine starts lagging and freezing, make sure that this option is turned off. Use the search function to find core isolation and disable it. Otherwise, open Microsoft Defender, go to Device Security, Core Isolation Details, and drag the slider to turn it off. Some programs may have a conflict with the already installed components such as Hyper-V, WSL2 or Sandbox. In VirtualBox, you will see this icon. In this case, they'll have to be disabled. For that purpose, open Control Panel, Programs, Programs and Features, turn Windows Features on or off, and uncheck the box next to Hyper-V. If this method doesn't help, you need to use a command to disable them. To do it, open the command prompt as administrator and run this command. After that, restart the operating system and check how it works. The icon should change to this one. Talking of virtual machine performance and how it may depend on using a specific hypervisor, some users argue that Oracle VirtualBox is the fastest application for virtual machines, while others find VMware Workstation or Microsoft Hyper-V to be the best. However, performance of a virtual machine on a particular computer depends on a number of factors, including the current version of the guest operating system, its type, system settings and virtual machine settings, performance of the host computer itself, and so on. In any case, you can always try another program. 
a virtual machine can be moved from one hypervisor to another, and you can see it in detail by watching a previous video. If you need to recover data from a virtual machine, use a dedicated tool – Hetman Partition Recovery. Hetman Partition Recovery can handle both virtual machine disks and virtual hard disks. You can always recover any data lost while working with a virtual machine – VMware, VirtualBox, Hyper-V, and others. If the virtual machine is no longer working, its virtual disk is damaged or important files are lost, our program will always help you to bring them back. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.